Tuning your portable noise monitor is done using the Noise Event Workbench. Each monitoring location will be different in regards to the local noise environment and proximity to flight routes. While some best guesses can be made, we recommend the monitor be gathering data for a minimum of two to five days of standard airport operations. From there, we can get a good data set to properly tune the monitor for best event detection. The Noise Event Workbench is available via browser or embedded in ANOMS for ease of access. It allows you to view noise at a specific location, see the peaks where possible events occurred, and it overlays radar flight tracks, representing them in how close they approach the monitor site. Let's take a look at the workbench in detail. First is the date selection. It is assumed that your monitor is on and collecting data at its intended location. Your first few days of data can be reviewed, so the event matching parameters can be refined. The workbench will help you increase the accuracy to the best possible level. Review what you feel to be a standard day of operation at the airport. Ensure that you can view the other days of standard operation for confidence in the data. You should of course select the monitoring site in question and in this example it is Demo 2. We'll come back to some of the other options in a moment. The default view is for 30 minutes around the middle of the day. The blue line represents the noise level, one second dB samples collected by the monitor. You should be able to identify background noise and also see peaks indicative of the profile caused by a passing aircraft. Then the dark red lines represent radar data and show how close an aircraft passed by the selected monitor site. The left y-axis is for noise and shows the dB range. And the right y-axis is the distance the aircraft is from the NMT in meters. So now we can understand that the noise peaks correlate with the approaching aircraft and that LMAX also occurs a short time after the closest approach which is in keeping with how sound travels and that the loudest area is behind the aircraft engines. The green swathes show what would be considered an aircraft noise event based on the current settings for the time of day. The aim is to tune these settings to minimize both missed aircraft events and incorrectly identified events. In this example, we can see a very well-tuned system that benefits from a good location with low background noise and easy, easily identifiable noise peaks that fit the profile of an aircraft noise event. There's a single peak that is identifiable as community noise. No aircraft was nearby at the time, and the current event detection parameters mean it does not qualify as an event. Specifically, it was not above the set threshold for the minimum duration. And here, it's five seconds. For most tuning cases, we advise threshold changes. The intent here is to ensure that community noise is not attributed to passing aircraft, and we do not want to raise the threshold too high to miss capturing more distant or smaller aircraft. Similarly, setting thresholds too low may result in long duration events where air conditioning or refrigeration units create a 120 second event. The aim is to find a sweet spot, and the noise event workbench allows you to model how new settings would look before you commit to actually changing them. The threshold settings are here. There are also three different templates available if you wish to have different settings at different times of the day. Otherwise, the first set of parameters applies at all times. So we change the threshold to 50 dB and click this button, which will reassess the data based on the current settings. And we should see the graph change. Now, a false positive has appeared where the noise level was above the new threshold for longer than the minimum duration. Revert changes back to original settings here. It is also advisable to only change one parameter at a time. Scroll through the day's data to see that this applies for all hours. There are some anomalies in parts of this data which is easily observable from the whole day histogram, so further investigation may be required. Adding extra templates is easy. Simply check the box to enable that template and pick the time that it will be enabled. So this button reverts the workbench back to current NMT settings. No changes are committed or sent to the monitor until you are ready. So this button will do that, sending changes to the NMT. They should take place almost immediately in the case of a real-time connection. Returning to the top section of the workbench, we'll look at percentile and flights options. So percentile will give you a marker on the graph based on the percentile chosen, where it shows how many percent of the noise level is above a certain marker for the sample shown. It can assist in assessing threshold levels. The two fixed levels are derived from hourly climates and the dynamic one applies across the entire period displayed. Then you can also refine your tuning to 
capture the types of aircraft profile you need to track or turn off track info completely. Customizing the display allows you to hide or show by op type, a selection of high use or high noise aircraft types or filter by category. Wake turbulence will filter basically on aircraft weight where heavy would include such types as the 747 or 777 for example. Finally, this button allows you to recalculate events for historical periods. So the initial data gathering period where you began to record data but had not refined event parameters can be reprocessed using the new settings. This means that if the settings were poor, resulting in poor detection, they can be fixed. This is simple to use, setting the start and end dates for reprocessing. So the workbench gives you all the tools you need to refine template settings for the best possible monitoring result. Test the modified parameters against actual data before committing the changes. Remember that a new monitoring station can have best guess event detection parameters in the initial phase, and when enough data is collected, those parameters can be further refined using this workbench.